I will be providing a brief demo of the integration between Palo Alto Network's firewalls and Cisco's Identity Services Engine for SGT enforcement. For those that are not aware, Identity Services Engine, or ICE for short, is Cisco's network access control solution. ICE has been a product offering under Cisco's portfolio since about 2011. However, there has been a renewed effort by Cisco to have customers adopt ICE as it plays a key component in Cisco's Digital Network Architecture, or DNA for short. With DNA, it's about intent-based networking, pushing policies to the infrastructure based on business intent and with user and device context. ICE provides DNA with user and device context through TrustSec and SGTs, which stands for either security group tags or scalable group tags, depending on who from Cisco you are speaking with. When a user and or device comes onto the network, ICE evaluates the user and device credentials, assigns it a tag value, and that tag value can be used to apply enforcement throughout the network. The main idea of SGT is to decouple policy creation from its traditional reliance on IP address subnets or VLANs. With SGTs, essentially a user and or device can come onto the network from anywhere over wired, wireless, or VPN, and as long as it's assigned the same security group tag, the same consistent policy can be applied everywhere throughout the network. It does not matter what IP address is assigned to the device or what VLAN it resides in. SGT is meant to simplify policy creation and enforcement because now policies can be built based on user and device context and no longer based on IP addresses. From an integration perspective, Palo Alto Network's firewall can consume SGT to IP address mapping from ICE through Platform Exchange Grid, or PX Grid for short. So the same SGTs created and assigned by ICE can be shared and used as part of a rule set in PanOS. The SGTs are shared to the firewall through dynamic address groups. And the dynamic address groups can be used as either the source and or the destination in a policy rule. For customers that have a Cisco-centric network and are moving towards DNA, ICE, and SGTs, Palo firewalls can be a key enforcement point in the network based on these SGTs. This means customers can still leverage all of the additional threat-centric capabilities Palo firewalls have to offer, such as app ID, threat, URL filtering, DNS security, wildfire, etc. With PanOS 9.0, the Palo Alto Firewall can now receive real-time DAG updates of SGT to IP address mapping from Cisco ICE. For this integration to take place, MindMeld and GridMeld are needed. MindMeld is a threat intelligence sharing platform that is either available as part of Autofocus or it is available for free as an open source application, application installed on Ubuntu. GridMeld is a Python application that runs on the MindMeld server which will consume SGT to IP address information from ICE and leverage MindMail to publish these IP indicators to the Palo Alto firewall as dynamic address groups. For this lab demo, here is the setup. I have a PA220 running PanOS 9.0.2-H4. I'm running Identity Services Engine 2.4 patch 8. Uh, MindMail is running on Ubuntu 18.0.4 and the GridMail version is 0.4.0. Here's a quick diagram showing the lab topology. There are four virtual machines installed on uh, my hypervisor. Three of the virtual machines belong to the data center VLAN in VLAN 10 in the subnet of 172.16.10.0/24, and I have one workstation that is in the workstation VLAN VLAN 11 at 10.0.11.0. The three servers in the data center comprised of ICE 2.4, MindMeld running the GridMail application, and a Microsoft Active Directory domain controller running DHCP DNS services as well as acting as a web server. I have a USB pass-through that allows the NIC on the virtual machine to be extended to the physical switch port. That way, wired 802.1x configuration can be applied to that switch port based on the user logging in. For this environment, the PA220 is acting as the first hop gateway for both VLAN 10 and VLAN 11. So all traffic is going through the Palo Alto firewall, whether it's from the workstation going out to the internet or from the workstation going in and out of the data center. 
For this demo, I will be logging into the Windows 7 machine using credentials belonging to different Active Directory users. And these users will be assigned a different tag value. And we can see how the tag allows for the Palo Alto firewall to apply enforcement based on whether the traffic is allowed or denied. Let's now take a closer look at each of the management interfaces in greater detail. First, let's take a closer look at MindMill. For those who are not using MindMill as part of Autofocus, uh, MindMill is available for download on Palo Alto Network's GitHub repository. We actually have an Ansible playbook available for MindMill that allows for easy installation depending on the Ubuntu version that you plan on running. Once MindMill is up and running, you'll arrive at the dashboard here. You'll need to go into config and leverage some of the predefined prototypes for the integration. For example, we'll be using this Dagpusher NG. You can see my existing information. I essentially cloned the uh, Dagpusher NG and made it use for my application here. And we will also need the stdlib.localdb prototype as well. Once these two prototypes have been cloned, uh, essentially you'll connect the output node to the input node. So if we go to the node settings, you can see here is my input node and here is my Dagpusher uh, SGT output node. Notice here 642. If I go here, the input is 642 here. Uh, the output though does need to be configured to be able to access the Palo Alto firewall via API. So here are the credentials for my Palo Alto firewall. Uh, with regards to grid mill, grid mill is installed on the Ubuntu server using pip. And you would essentially just modify the parameters for grid mill to reflect the customer's unique ICE environment. With regards to GridMail, there is an administrator guide available also on Palo Alto Network's GitHub site, which provides you with detailed instructions with regards to the MindMail configuration, as well as the GridMail parameters and configuration. Special thanks to Kevin Steves of Palo Alto Networks, who not only authored this guide here, but is also the creator of the GridMail Python application. We can take a closer look at Identity Services Engine here. As mentioned previously, I'm running ICE version 2.4. You can see under patch management here, uh, I am running patch 8 within this 2.4 version. I have a single ICE node, which is running administration, monitoring, as well as policy service. The PX grid service also needs to be enabled for the integration to take place. This ICE instance, it is tied into Active Directory. And I am receiving Active Directory group information from the domain controller and this is what will be used for policy enforcement. Well if we take a look at the trusted components here, here are the security groups that I have defined within ICE. The SGTs that we'll be primarily working with in this demo will be the doctors, nurses, professors, students, teachers. These are the security groups that we'll be working with. Under administration PX grid services, we can see these are the subscribers to PX grid. Here I have grid tests. So this is grid test is defined within grid meld. And so this is how grid meld is receiving the SGT to IP address mapping from ICE when users uh, come onto the network. Under policy, policy sets. 
this demo, I'll be primarily focused on the wired.1x. So we can take a look at some of my authorization policies here. So when a device first connects to the network and it's being powered on, it's going to get this authoriz authorization profile. Uh, at this point, when the user receives the Windows logon prompt, at that point in time, the device should only need access to the domain controller. And there's no security group tag assigned at that point in time. Once a user authenticates to the network, whether they're using credentials that show that they're part of the doctor's group or nurse's group, professors, teachers, they're going to be assigned a particular tag value here. On the Palo Alto firewall, uh, here on the dashboard, you can see my PA220. This is the software version that is running. If we go to the Networks tab, we can see that I have two sub-interfaces configured under Ethernet 1 slash 8. One's for VLAN 10 and one is for VLAN 11. Like I mentioned before, the Palo Alto firewall is acting as the first hop gateway for each of these VLANs. And so whether traffic is going from the workstations outbound to the internet or from the workstation coming into the data center, it will pass through the Palo Alto for policy enforcement. Under objects, and address groups, this is where we see the security group tags that are learned from Cisco ICE. For example, if I come to add here and change the type to dynamic, we can see here are the SGTs that the firewall has learned about from ICE, the doctors, nurses, professors, students, teachers. If we take a look at the policy section, Let me just filter this down a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read. Let's dive into the demo. First, I have to start the grid mount application running on uh, the Ubuntu server where my mount is installed. You can see here my mount is running on IP address 1.2.16.10.252. Let me visit my reach for a client to my Ubuntu server, I have config, 172.16.10.252. I will start the grid meld application. You can see grid meld, I am running uh, version 0.4.0 .0 here. I am going to switch to this Windows 7 client, wired client, and power it up. So as this device comes onto the network, depending on what credentials I use to log into the machine, ICE will assign a different tag value for this client. And you will be able to see the policies that are being enforced on the Palo Alto firewall based on the user that's logging in. While the machine's Powering up, let me go to ICE. I will go to Operation Radius Live Logs, and we'll just wait for this device to come onto the network. Okay, so now this machine is at the Control Alt Delete prompt. Let me go fresh again. Okay, so the authentication process that took place was this. Uh, first, when the machine came onto the network, I seized the device as uh, just a MAC address, and here it hit a MAC authentication bypass rule. However, as Windows uh, finally loads on the machine and there is a machine certificate installed on the endpoint and the, the certificate uh, presented itself to ICE, ICE sees it as a valid domain asset. And so a downloadable ACL was pushed to that switch port that allows it access to the domain controller at this, at this particular point in time. If we go to the far right, you can see there's no security group tag that's been assigned to the endpoint currently. On the Ubuntu server, if we take a look at grid meld, we can see the same thing, MAC address here, uh, device name here, IP address here, no SGT. Go back to the Windows client. Let me just quickly log in. Okay, student one, I'm gonna log in as student one. Okay. 
So student one has logged in successfully to this endpoint. If you go back to ICE, let me just hit refresh. We can see that uh, student one it presented valid credentials to ICE. It is a valid user in the network, and now a new downloadable ACL has been pushed to a switch port that's permitting all traffic. If we go a little further right here, we can see the authorization policy, uh, wired.1x AD, and uh, we're assigning a student's SGT, and the security group tag students has now been assigned. On the Ubuntu server, we can see here that uh, student one has been lo has logged into the machine. Uh, it's assigned a student's SGT, and uh, 10.0.11.100 has been associated with the student's SGT. If we go to the Palo Alto firewall under objects and address groups, so these are the address groups that I previously defined. The student's SGT here uh, is just saying that this is a dynamic uh, address group based on anything where uh, there's a student SGT tag assigned. Under more here, you can see 10.0.11.100 has been assigned to this particular address group. Okay. If we take a look at the policies, we have some policies defined based on student SGT. Right? One is denying ICMP outbound for students, and the other is uh, denying alcohol content for students. The deny ICMP outbound, this is using SGT source right, with uh, application ID. And the deny alcohol is SGT source using uh, URL category as one of the elements here. Okay. So let's go back to my Windows host. Let me just bring up a command prompt. See, uh, 4.2.2.2 is denied outbound. If we go back to the monitor tab here. And let me just do that and maybe an action of deny filter it down a little bit so it's easier to see. Okay. You can see deny ICMP outbound for students uh, is in effect. Right. Let me launch a web browser here. MSN comes up, so it does mean that I have access to the internet. But if I, let's see, do a search for Budweiser. Okay, uh, web page is blocked. Let me search for something else, Johnny Walker. Uh, that was a typo, but it still presented Johnny Walker. Right. Go to Johnny Walker. Uh, this is an HTTPS site, and so User response page is not being displayed because I don't have SCL decrypt enabled. However, if we go to the monitor section, and let me just change the action to reset both. Uh, we can see alcohol is definitely uh, denied. Deny alcohol content for students is in effect here. Now we will log into this machine as a different user. I will log into the machine as a men member of the professor's uh, Active Directory user group. So I'll switch user, log in as professor one. Okay, you can see professor one has logged into the network. Let's return to eyes, hit refresh here. You can see what happened. Uh, originally, student one was logged in. Once student one logged out, it returned back to the just a device authentication and the DACL of traffic only going to AD was applied to the switch port. And then when professor one logged onto the network and it was a valid user account, the permit all traffic 
dynamic access list was applied to the switch port. More importantly, we can see on the far right that the professor's SGT is now assigned to the same IP 10.0.11.100. If we go to the input to server, you can see now student one uh, was previously assigned, returned back to the, uh, the device name, and then now a professor one logged in, user, uh, assigned an SGT of professors, same IP address 10.0.11.100. On the Palo Alto, under objects, right? if we look at the address assigned to the student's SGT dynamic address group, we can see 10.0.11.100 is no longer assigned here. For the educator, SGT is just comprised of uh, the professor's SGT or uh, the teacher's. Right? And we can see here that 10.0.11.100 has now been assigned to this educator's SGT. If we look at the policies, I have an allow all for educators. So technically speaking, if we go back to this Windows host here, we bring up just a command prompt. I can ping outbound, no issues. And I have to learn access. Just go to my monitor tab. Um, I changed the rule uh, previously to allow all for educators. You can see this is essentially what's in effect. Right? And so if I was to do a search for Johnny Walker, for example, uh, home of Johnny Walker whiskey, Uh, I can access a website without any issues. So this is just an example of SGT for outbound access to the internet and how we can apply policy based on you know, source or destination SGT combined with other elements such as app ID or URL filtering. Now another use case we'll look at here is for SGT enforcement for accessing resources in the data center. Uh, for this, let me log off of here. Again, if I go back to ICE at this point, hit a refresh, and we'll go further left. Let's return back to just the device auth. And on grid mailed here, You can see uh, I'm here, uh, again, uh, device auth, just a device name, no SGT assigned at, at this time. Right? So now I'm going to log in as a member of a doctor's group to the same workstation, and this will demonstrate uh, SGT enforcement for accessing resources in the local data center. If we go to ICE, hit a refresh here, we can see that Dr. One has, was able to log in the network without any issues, permit traffic, um, permit traffic all to the doctor because the values are on the network. Same IP address, 10.0.11.100. And, but now the doctor's SGT has been assigned. If you go to Ubuntu uh, grid meld, we can see that Dr. One is now assigned to the network. Dr. One has logged into the network. It's assigned to Dr.'s SGT, and its the IP address is the same, 10.0.11.100. If we go to the Palo firewall uh, under objects, you can see 10.0.11.100 is no longer associated with the educator's dynamic address group, but now it's part of Dr.'s. 11.100, and the doctor's uh, SGT is just made up of um, matching the SGT underscore doctors here. Based on my policy, I have a law all for doctors. Notice that uh, the source zone is workstations with doctor's SGT. The destination zone is to the data center or uh, outbound to the internet, uh, untrust L3, allow all. 
If I go to the endpoint here, just open up a web browser. Okay. Again, I have internet access because Doctor allow all. But this time, I actually want to show that I can access resource in the, in the data center. So I'll be going to records.demo.local, HTTP records.demo.local. And you can see I can access, this is just a, something I put together on uh, Windows IIS showing that it has access to medical records on the, within the local data center. If we go to the monitor tab, we'll have to change this instead of allow all for doctors. Uh, we'll just hit it. Still 10.11.100. Uh, you can see allow all for doctors um, to the data center zone. Right, is allowed. So now we'll log off of doctor. And now I will log into this host as a nurse. So perhaps in an environment, we do not want nurse to have access to patient records, only doctors. So now I will log into this host. So choose her as nurse one. We look at identity services engine. Hit refresh again. Notice that nurse is now logged in. SGT of nurse has been assigned on grid meld. Right. 10.11.100 is now associated with the nurse SGT. Go back to the PA220 under objects. Right, uh, 10 0, 11, 100 is no longer assigned here, but it's now assigned as part of the nurses SGT. And nurses SGT is just made up of nurses. Right. So if we go to policies here, I have a policy stating that um, I'm denying nurses or students to medical records. Again, this is either nor, uh, nurse SGT or students SGT going to the data center uh, to my particular server here and service HTTP. So let's go back to my host. I do have outbound internet because I'm not blocking that for nurses. But if I'm trying to access you can see uh, cannot display page here. Let me go back to the monitor tab. And, whoops. There we go. Web browsing, deny nurses or students to medical records. Right? Uh, 10.0.11.100. So this is an, just another example of using SGT for policy enforcement. This time accessing resources with, within a data center. And the last demonstration I will provide is, let's say you're assigning within ICE a new security group tag, and so how does the firewall learn about it? If we go back to ICE and we go back to my policy sets and the wire.1x authorization policy, you'll notice that when the machine is at this state, when it's the machine just presented with the control alt delete prompt, 
no user login, I don't have an SGT assigned at this particular point in time. But let's just say we want to create an SGT for this particular point, and that way we can get really granular and say when the device is at that login prompt, it shouldn't be able to access anything. So within ICE works, Work Center, let me just go to Trusted Components. I am going to add a new static group. So the last one that was used is uh, decimal 109. So I'll just add it as 110. I'll name it uh, pre-login, for example. You can see pre-login is now assigned, has been defined. I will assign this SGT to my policy here. So when a machine returns to uh, this date, I'm gonna assign an SGT here. login and I'm gonna save this on the PA 220 if I go back to objects address groups let me just add a new address group change it to dynamic notice that uh, I'm not I haven't learned about that tag yet because that tag hasn't been used by ice at this time So what we'll do is I'm gonna log off of this endpoint. As soon as I log off, I should be at the control alt delete prompt. Let's go back to ICE, operation radius live logs. Right. So right now it has returned to this point where it's just allowing access to the domain controller for user authentication. Notice that the security group tag of a pre-login has been assigned now where it was never used in the past. If we go back to Ubuntu, we can see pre-login, SGT is now assigned and just based on the device name, pre-login, and it's associated with 10.0.11.100. Right? So on the Palo Alto firewall, now if I go to objects and I go to add, and dynamic. Okay. Notice that pre-login is available to me now here. Right? So I can use this as a match criteria. Right? Call it pre-login SGT. So under a policy, you can see now pre-login is available for me to use as either the source or the destination. I hope this demo has been helpful in showcasing the integration between Palo Alto Firewall and Identity Services Engine with uh, SGT enforcement. And I thank you for watching. Have a nice day.